Hej, zapraszam Was do filmu, w którym lektor opowiada o tym, jak pszczoły się komunikują, zwłaszcza w kontekście przekazywania informacji dotyczącej pożytku. O tym, jak polaryzacja światła wpływa na to, że pszczoły wiedzą, jak wracać do ula. I co z tym wspólnego mają kierunki świata. I po tym filmie powiem Wam coś, co nieco burzy dotychczasowy światopogląd. Aristotle was one of the first to document the intriguing behavior of honeybees. How is it, for instance, that a colony coordinates its workers' activity? What appears to be a random swarming mass of life may actually be intelligent behavior. A foraging honeybee will eventually discover a new food source, such as a freshly blooming flower or artificial feeder placed by a scientist. After this visit, an interesting thing happens. Over the next few minutes, many other bees arrive at the same location. They don't travel as a group. Instead, each bee finds the food source individually. How could these bees, who held no previous knowledge of this site, suddenly know precisely where the feeder was located? Is it possible that the animals communicate amongst themselves? To answer this question, Austrian biologist Karl von Frisch devised a series of experiments in the 1940s. Researchers at Georgia Tech have reproduced von Frisch's pioneering experiments using a modern observation hive. Two feeders are placed in different directions away from the hive. At each location, visiting honeybees are marked with a small spot of paint. A separate color of paint is used at each station. So, when a bee returns to the hive, it can easily be determined which feeding site it visited. Before von Frisch, other scientists had observed that returning bees tended to waggle about excitedly in a figure eight pattern before sharing the collected pollen and nectar with their hive mates. In this two station experiment, von Frisch noticed that the bees returning from the same feeding source danced differently from bees that arrived from the other location. While both sets of bees perform the classic figure eight dance, the orientation of the dances is offset between the two groups. Bees returning from one feeder perform a rotated version of the dance done by the other bees. Incredibly, the angle of rotation precisely matches the angle between the feeding stations and the hive. This must be a clue to the mystery of how the bees are able to share information about the location of food. Through further experimentation, details of the grammar of the honeybee's dance language began to emerge. The dance exploits two fundamental tools available to the honeybee. First, their ability to see ultraviolet and polarized light allows them to determine the location of the sun at all times. Ultraviolet light is able to penetrate thick clouds or fog. Also, as light from the sun passes through the atmosphere, it's polarized in a direction towards the sun when viewed from the earth. Devices like polarized film, sunglasses, or honeybee eyes can detect this orientation and determine the position of the sun even while looking in the opposite direction. This gives the bees a type of solar compass, allowing them to always know the precise position of the sun in the sky. A honeybee's entire environment seems to be constantly pointing towards the sun. In addition to this solar compass, bees possess a finely tuned internal clock. This clock is accurate enough for the bees to constantly estimate the new position of the sun as it travels across the sky. In this way, a honeybee can know the current orientation of the sun, even after spending many hours within a dark hive. They can even take into account changes in seasons or latitudes. Inside of a dark vertically oriented beehive, the natural shared reference point is gravity, establishing both an up and a down direction. A bee's solar compass and internal clock provides another communal reference point, the sun. By pairing these two global constants, the bees form a simple language. Within the hive, the direction up, away from gravity, substitutes for the location of the sun. Then the angle that the bee dances compared to this up direction 
is the same angle a bee should fly away from the sun in order to find the target flower. So if the bee dances directly upward, other bees know that they can find flowers by flying directly towards the sun. If a bee dances 90 degrees to the left, then bees leaving the hive should fly 90 degrees to the left of the sun. A bee angling its dance towards the ground will let others know to fly directly away from the sun. As the day goes by, a bee will even use its internal clock to adjust for the movement of the sun in the sky. This lets fellow workers always know the correct direction to travel in order to find food. The central waggle section of the bee's dance also contains information about the distance to a food source. Longer time spent in this part of the dance means that the food is further away. Shorter durations mean that the food is closer by. In general, a bee increases the duration of this section by one second for every kilometer of distance to the food. When food is within several meters of the hive, this central section of the dance will shrink, causing a circular dance. For bees, distance is actually measured by the amount of energy it takes them to travel. Thus, a strong headwind could cause a bee to dance as if the food came from a further distance away. Again, the information contained in a honeybee's dance consists of two parts. One, the orientation of the dance which describes what angle to travel away from the sun, and two, the duration of the middle part of the dance which expresses the distance of a food source away from the hive. Other information such as quality or abundance of food might also be encoded within other parameters of the dance or in pheromones released by the bee. At Georgia Tech's Multi-Agent Robotics and Systems Laboratory, our goal is to work with scientists to automate the tracking and help understand the organization of multiple automata. By harnessing new computer vision techniques, we can more efficiently and effectively study the behavior of large colonies of living organisms. This information can help us uncover more secrets behind animal communication and lead to innovations in robotics. Otóż, kiedy Karl von Frisch dochodził tego, że pszczoły przekazują sobie na temat pożytku informacji w tańcu, to równolegle inny naukowiec mówił o tym, że no wcale tak nie jest. Jednak dowody Karla von Frisza były na tyle przekonujące, że wybrano jego wersję. Tymczasem okazuje się, że gdyby pszczoły dostały informacje na temat pożytku w tańcu i nie dostały żadnych innych informacji, to nie znalazłyby żadnego pożytku. I zrobiono już takie badanie, w którym pszczoła zatańczyła, nie było żadnych pszczół na zewnątrz ula, takich, które mogłyby sygnalizować, w którą stronę lecieć. No i rzeczywiście, naśladowczynie w ogóle nie potrafiły znaleźć pożytku. I tę myśl rozwija Jurgen Tauc w książce Mowa pszczół, więcej niż taniec, do której Was serdecznie zapraszam. Nie chcę mówić więcej, żeby nie spoilerować. Książka, jak podobnie jak fenomen pszczół miodnych, Otwiera oczy i jest niesamowita. Hej.